Hey everyone, this is Phil again from Church Street Creations and I'm going to show you today how I've made this uh, what I'd call a bread tray. Uh, somebody gave me a design that they liked and I made one uh, and they were pretty happy with it so I made one for myself and this actually is pretty nice for sliced French bread or something like that. You bring it out and serve soup uh, with the bread and it's actually quite nice. I made this out of a piece of box elder. Um, it's actually pretty thin uh, doesn't need to be thick. It's got an interesting handle on it, and I'd make this using you know, the same sort of tools that I've made in the other videos, uh, just to get a sense of the size. This is a five-inch sanding disc, so it's not a particularly large item. I've had people ask me for smaller ones, slightly larger ones, but uh, uh, fundamentally the same shape. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay that shape out on a block, which I kind of already did. Uh, this block is, oh, I don't know about two inches thick and it has a pretty terrible void in it that you can see I've cleaned out a little bit but it doesn't go all the way through and I'm thinking well you know I can make something out of this still it'll be pretty nice it's got a couple of nice flames in it so all I did was I just laid the bowl upside down on it and unfortunately it's a little bit too short here but that's okay I'll just make a shorter handle and I laid out the lines so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this material just using a chop saw and then I'm going to clamp to the bench and I'm going to use the Arbitec turbo plane uh, to take out uh, the shape inside here, uh, rough it out top and bottom and then I'll, I'll sand it using uh, an endless supply of sanding paper. All right, so let me do that and I'll be right back. So I chopped off a couple of edges here as best I can. I was going to use my um, jigsaw but I didn't, couldn't find a long enough bit. I don't know where the heck that went. And so I just used the chop saw and chopped off a couple of pieces here. But at the end of the day, uh, I can take this down really quickly with the Arbitec too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I left this little piece on here just to kind of show you, you know, the back side here. It didn't cut all the way through because of the chop saw's depth. So I'm just going to take the Arbitec to it and we'll get rid of that uh, with no problem at all. Clamp this to the bench. Put my headphones on. It's pretty nice how fast that takes that down. Uh, that chunk is gone and I actually um, carved out the edge here. I just try to get close to the line and I'll fine tune that as I go. Um, I want to leave a little bit of wood over here um, and up here just so I can clamp but I'm going to take this curve out then and then I'll start uh, carving out the, um, the bowl shape. And actually I think I'll chop these corners off too with the chop saw. One of the things I like about this tool is that you know, it, it is spinning at 12,000 RPM and it can be a bit of a beast, but after you get used to using it a little bit, you really have a lot of fine control with it and you can go quite gently or quite aggressively and it just really depends on uh, your skill and it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of skill if I can do it. the rough outline and ultimately uh, I could just use the Arbitec to carve out the bowl. Uh, here's a tip. Uh, what I like to do is sort of draw out a little bit of the inside design and uh, you have to be very careful but I'll take a Forstner bit on my drill press and just take out a little bit of the material in the center uh, so I kind of set the bottom 
and then I have a nice place uh, as a point of reference, and you'll see what I mean for the Arbor Tech, so I don't go too deep on this wood that uh, is a little bit soft, and I don't want to go through the bottom and just have wasted my time. So what I'll do is I'll just hand draw a little bit of an outline here that sort of represents what will happen. This will be like the curve down, and this will sort of be the bottom, the bottom portion, and I should be able to eliminate that. Uh, and, you know, again, I'm just sort of doing it to my own taste freehand based on some of the experience that I've had carving uh, the pieces that I've carved. And I don't try to overthink it too much. So this will be you know, approximately the same sort of thing, actually a mirror image um, of this where you can see this part here is sort of this part here and the curve of the bolt. Pretty straightforward. So I'll, uh, I'll go take care of this in the drill press and then I'll come back. That didn't take long because this wood is pretty soft. Uh, unfortunately, this red wick was high in the wood and I don't think it's going to carry through. Uh, you can't really see it, this red wick here. And when I dr drilled down a little bit, it sort of disappeared. And that happens. This piece may end up being pretty clear, although there's some red on the bottom edge here. It may come through. This is the game you play with this kind of wood. Um, but it does look like this this um, void is going to be completely gone and it doesn't go through the other side, so I'm in good shape there. Uh, and you can see what I mean. I, I just took out a little bit of the wood here and made myself a nice sort of flat part. Um, with a Forstner bit, you get these little holes um, where the bit uses to stabilize itself. And you have to be real careful of those because they go a little bit deeper than uh, the actual Forstner itself. And that's a tip that you know, you, if you aren't careful about how deep you're drilling, you end up with a hole that's, and you end up with a bottom of a bowl that's thinner than you want it to be. But the Arbitech will take uh, quick care of this, and I'm just going to freehand carve it, and hopefully it'll come out good. Uh, and then I'll uh, shape the bottom a little bit, and uh, we'll have a bread bowl. what I mean, hopefully, um, what I mean by the holes from a Forstner bit, as well as using that flat portion of the Forstner bit as a guide. And so it just kind of naturally carves into the shape that I want when I do it this way. On a smaller piece like this, the hardest part is always finding a good place to clamp it. If you had to do that by hand, it would take you quite a long time, and you know it's not going to give you a perfectly smooth bottom of a bowl, um, but it's going to get you close, and then you can spend the rest of the time sanding and fine tuning um, something small like this. Again, you don't want to make a mistake though. If you hit the edge of this bowl with the Arbor Tech, it's gone, and I probably won't be able to save it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lay out the bottom. Um, it's not very really flat right now, but that doesn't matter. I'll just hand draw the bottom uh, kind of arc that I want this thing to be able to sit on based on where I think the edge sort of is of the curve. I'm not trying to overthink it. Plenty of stuff to overthink. And I don't know if you can see that too well, but it's just a an oblong shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put hips on this part of the handle here um, to try to get 
a design that I like that's sort of this kind of curve. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, so that it feels a little more comfortable in your hand. Um, Got to be careful here because you don't want any tear out on a handle that's small. I'll take out some of this material here in, inside the handle edge. And then, of course, I'll just round this all down um, and try to create a nice curve on the bottom. I'm talking too much. I should be carving. tricky part. I got the handle close and that's really all you need to do is just get it close and then spend the time, rest of the time shaping it with a like an 80 or 100 grit sort of sandpaper. Um, the tricky part with this is when I start to freehand without the clamp these edges uh, because I really need to see the top of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl to be able to carve around the side which is sort of difficult. I, I might be able to clamp it to the bench but this is a smaller piece so you really gotta hang on tight and watch yourself. piece. Let's compare it and see how, uh, how close you go. Uh, mirror images of each other. That's a little weird. I didn't actually intend that, but it's, they're pretty close in size. Um, I did get one nice little box elder red flame here uh, and some color on the bottom and across the handle. So it'll come out nice. Uh, a little bit of dark blue in the bottom, but you can see this is as far as you need to go with the Arbitec. You know, get it roughed out. It took, oh, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to get it to this point. Um, all in, including a few interruptions. So uh, it's a great tool to work with if you're doing this kind of woodworking. Okay, so I just spent a whole bunch of time sanding and I just thought I'd show you the final piece before finish. I haven't put any finish on it. I haven't decided what kind of finish I want to put on. So it'll be either be oil or wiping varnish or a traditional food safe finish. I don't know, but... Okay, so I've spent about, I don't know, hour and a half sanding this through the typical grits that I go through. Here you can see the finished product. Uh, I wiped it down with some mineral spirits. I do that so that I can see if there's any sanding scratches and to get all the dust off prior to finish. 
So as you can see, uh, you can make a really beautiful end product even though the Arbortech is a little bit rough. Uh, it gets you close enough so that you can then finish the product off and come out with something very satisfactory. If you want to see the end product and some details on it uh, and some more pictures, go to churchstreetcreations.com. That's churchstcreations.com. And look for number 99. All right? Thanks for watching.